First, I didn't think you know it was feasible to do with a small launch vehicle because if you look at all the traditional approaches, they're just not going to work. You don't have the propellant margins in a small launch vehicle. So um, we had to look at different approaches. And as we started to, to pull real data from real flights, um, it became obvious that there was an approach that, we, that, that could work. It was a little bit unconventional, and we started off down that path. The most important thing that we're trying to achieve here is just to get the stage down to earth in one piece, or as close to one piece as possible. Um, so we won't be trying to scoop it out of the sky with a helicopter. We have demonstrated that we can do that, um, so I'm not too worried about that. The real challenge for us here is getting it through the wall, getting it under a parachute, getting it decelerated, and gently touching down into the ocean where we'll go and pick it up with recovery vessels. The vehicle is fully on internal power. Stage one and stage two tanks are pressed. Do you understand? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And we have liftoff of Electron from Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1. Coming up next in the mission timeline is main engine cutoff, also known as METO, as Electron's Rutherford engines power down so that the first and second stages of their vehicle can separate cleanly. Following that, the vacuum optimised engine on the second stage will ignite to carry the satellites on board further into space. ECO confirmed. Staging. Stage to ignition. Miko is confirmed and so too is the startup of the second stage Rutherford engine. With the separation of stage one and two complete, we'll try and stick with both views as long as we have them. The trajectories are looking good so far while we're awaiting fairing separation. Fairing separation. And there goes the fairing and welcome to space, Mr. Noam Chomsky. We're now at T plus six minutes and eight seconds into flight and both our second stage burn and first stage booster re-entry are looking stable. Next up will be battery hot swap to continue supplying power to the second stage engine and systems. We've had battery hot swap confirmation and we're about a minute and a half away from when we expect stage one's drug shoot to deploy. The ride is going to get a little bumpy on the way back down with the booster reaching several times the speed of sound on its fall back to earth. We should expect the first stage's main parachute to deploy at about 8 minutes and 44 seconds into the mission. We've just had confirmation of successful drug shoot and main shoot deploy. We can't wait to share these photos of recovery in the coming days. Seeker confirmed. Nominal transfer orbit. Electron's second stage takes us to an elliptical orbit where the kick stage then separates. From here, the 3D printed Curie engine on Electron ignites to propel the stage and its payloads to a circular orbit for deployment. Using a cold gas reaction control system, or RCS, the kick stage accurately points itself to deploy each satellite to a precise and individual orbit, even on rideshare missions with multiple satellites like this one. Once the satellites are deployed, the Curie engine reignites, propelling the kick stage to a lower orbit where it will be dragged into the Earth's atmosphere faster, leaving behind no space junk in orbit. <laughs> 